Snowboard game, rocket you to the top of the mountain for high flying tricked out competition. So make the best jumps, earn the most points, and win. Extreme Snowboard Game by Mattel. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host, and today we're going to be taking a look at the vintage board game. Wait for it. This is an interesting one. It is called Extreme Snowboarder. It's by Mattel. It actually came out in 2003. Sorry, the box is a bit falling apart on me, but it's a really unique game. Let's first take a look at the components. So what we have here is this nice 3D kind of um, mountain um, setup here where it has these gates, these tree branches that come out of it, these kind of landing pads, which we'll get to in a moment. You'll see there's different numbers here for points, which will matter in a moment. Then you have this really nice 3D ramp, which is super cool because it almost looks like a Hot Wheels setup and that's exactly what it is. When I first saw the game I didn't know how it played because there wasn't anything on the internet that really explained it well, at least to what the mechanism itself was because I assumed it was free falling down, maybe it had wheels on it to where it was shooting it up, but no, it has a straight up charge pad built into the ramp which is super unique. It it again reminds me a lot like a Hot Wheels um, kind of setup here. So what happens is when you slide your snowboarder piece, which each of you get two, it's a two player game, but we'll get to that in a moment because I'm not a big fan of two player games. Um, but you take the snowboarder itself, you slide them down the ramp, and once it gets to the center part, it, it's almost like a charge point, charge port, sorry, words are hard, much like a Hot Wheels car where it'll shoot up and jolt and give it like an electronic kind of boost to where it shoots up the other part of the ramp and can land on the mountain itself. Now, what? why this matters is your goal is to just get the most points. So initially it's a two player game, each of you has one snowboarder and you go down and you land, you count your points up and then again, however, whatever range you decide to stop at, the player who gets their first wins or the player with the most points wins depending on how many games you decide to play or how many times you decide to go up and down the mountain. Now, one of the things that I I didn't really care for was the fact that it was two player um, but again we'll get to that in a moment here the components on it are just extremely well made some solid hard plastic in fact when I first saw it I thought man this is just going to be a solid game board that's all set up here and it's just going to be landing on that same spot here but they went a bit above and beyond which they didn't even have to do to where the little kind of uh, landing spots there are all interchangeable so you can rearrange it and change the configuration of this mountain each time you play and that can definitely matter if the game's getting stale to where it's currently at again I'm not a fan at all of two player games but they're there's two for each player so in fact I just give one to each player so if you want to play with four players which is the normal amount for a vintage game at least it's pretty common four players uh, you just give each player one uh, snowboarder and you, you just keep going back and forth until you make it to a certain number or a certain number of games that you decide to have it go up now one of the things that will be really important with this is you can slide it upwards backwards kind of side to side ankle it a little bit just to try to get it in the sweet spot which if you're really good you'll try to get it to land on the center pad and get that full 30 points which is super satisfying I've seen it a few times and it's pretty hilarious when it slides down the mountain just perfectly lands on that that's extremely satisfying the other key point too is if it lands when it shoots up if it lands um, kind of face down or sideways it's worth the number of points that's there but if it's upright it's double the points so that can also be pretty important on making sure that you got your guy standing up properly and kind of you know just messing with how it slides down I know you can't do too much strategy or configuration with it, but there's enough to really enjoy it. And there's definitely a game here. And in fact, I've definitely updated and changed a lot of the rules here because initially it's just you go down um, and whoever had the most points wins. That's it. And then it says in the instructions mentioning a horse, but I thought that was completely silly because if you just leave the kind of setup exactly where it's at and you just slide your guy down, it should in theory go to the same spot. It may not always be perfect, but like there's nothing you can really do to dictate whether or not that's going to happen or not. So it seems silly unless they move it and then you try to move it and line it up the same way kind of thing. It just seems like too much work and it does not 
kind of add to the game and the excitement for. So what I ended up doing, so you have the board all set up here. Now again, the initial game is you just slide until you get to the certain points. Now you can play in teams or I, what I'm thinking of doing later is seeing if I can find some more of those snowboarder pieces by themselves and then just painting them so then I can play two with each player for a four player game, which would be extremely satisfying. But again, you don't really need to have multiple because you can just keep resetting it after each um, go around, which is important. Now, one of the things to mention too, is when it slides down, the branches itself can catch it, but those aren't worth points in the rules. I've actually changed that to where those are worth points. They're actually worth five points, much like some of the kind of outer edges at the top of the ramp, because if you get to the center where the flag is, that's a really good spot to go. Um, same with kind of landing in that center pad. But if you go through the hole, it's not worth anything. Or at least in my games, it's not. I looked at the rules. It doesn't really mention it. There's just a 30 on the pad. So I'm assuming it has to land there, especially if it says a no snowboarder zone near the area. Now there's a few different areas in which you can get these points. One of the ways that we ended up doing it was kind of angling him a little bit to kind of make him do these tricks. Sometimes he'll even spin in the air, which if he does, will give it an added five points to it. And five points for getting caught in the branches because sometimes you don't get caught in anything he'll just slide off the board and that's worth zero points as it should and as it is in the original rules and then when you start to get more points as you go we've actually made it to the point to where if uh i guess in our games we were using two for each time that we went that if one if you can knock down a player off of his area then you steal those points from them so it was kind of this whole take that back and forth thing now again this game isn't offering a lot of complexities or a lot of strategy or a whole lot of game elements to it. It's really a big toy factor, but I got it for $10, which is crazy. I definitely wasn't going to turn that up. And later finding out it was electronic was like, holy crap, I had no idea when I was initially getting it. So it was super worth it for me. Again, if this sounds like the kind of game for you, I would recommend it if you can get a good deal on it, but it doesn't offer a whole lot. Again, I just basically explained the rules there for you too. And if you want to add a little more flavor and spice to the point system, you can definitely take um, some of the ideas that I threw out at you or even create your own because there's definitely room for that and room for different configurations to where maybe even you have the branches at the top who knows hmm my work but that's honestly all i have for you guys today if you are interested in notifications there is a bell up there somewhere please like comment and subscribe i do appreciate any feedback i'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous and with your guys help i have been doing so monday regular board game reviews wednesday weekly update slash talks and on friday is my vintage board game reviews that is all i have for you guys today i'll see you guys next time